anyone could have the vendetta. It's just like the mask, right? You see on movie V for Vendetta. Yeah. Anonymous dude with the mask. I yeah. love that mask. Exactly. Yeah, the mask is just a symbol. Doesn't matter if you're wearing the Freddy Cougar or face or Jason mask or the anonymous mask or the yeah. saw mask. Yeah. The point is that they're believing in a symbol and the character and something so strongly that they're willing to die for it and full heartedly put every single ounce of their strength, power, being, energy, and finance into it. So when you could plug in that hard and press forward on people, very few people are going to stop your momentum. It's like a juggernaut effect. Welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Purpose Over Pleasure with your host, Alex Payne. And today we have the return of Kevin Maxwell part, God knows what, but by popular demand, Kevin, tell him, tell him, man, tell him what has been accomplished so far. Tell him what the bright future is about, man. Give well, the haters a reason to hate, bro. Come on. You know, we're good at that shit. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a lot of reasons to hate. You know, we get hate everywhere we go, every car we drive, depending whether it's the limo, the Benz AMG. You gotta tell them about the limo. The limo, is, tell them about the limo was on the way, and now it's here parked out front. So anytime anybody needs to be picked up from the Southern California area and is ready to come to our studios or do business with us and Cube World Media, Cube World USA, or Purpose Over Pleasure, we're happy to go pick you guys up at no cost and show you what we do. Yeah, for you artists out there, I mean, you're going to be picked up fly. Exclusive. Exclusive in the limo yep. with the fridge and TV and all kinds of shit. In yeah, it. as popcorn, full yeah. lay down bed, toilet, shower, everything inside of it. So anything you need to do while you're on the way over here, you'll get done for sure. That's good. That's good. Oh, man. What what a s last couple of months we had. It's been crazy, hasn't it? It's been crazy. But good. We but good. A lot of ups and downs, but mainly all ups. Mainly all ups. And um, it's an exciting time. You know, we're expanding internationally now. Um, we're going to Mexico, Philippines. We already have people working for us over yeah. there. Dude, that was a genius idea, by the way. Yeah. Dude, yep. that was, I mean, thank God for VAs. Uh, it saved us Bro. tens of thousands every single location just off marketing managers yeah. and budgets yeah. and people that were not necessary. And, and basically, that's why all of corporate America is leaving. That's why everyone's leaving California. Because every single time a business opens, they either get sued, they get fined, they get violated, they get threatened, or they get shut down just for trying to give people jobs and opportunities. And that's why it's so unfortunate the state's just really going down the drain. And everyone, including us, had to move to other states like Texas yeah. just to stay operational. And hey, let me ask you this. So you you brought up a good topic. State of California and business, right? I yeah. mean, we're doing business in other states, right? Different ventures. But this is our home state. How much longer, how much worse do you think it's going to get? Like, is there, will there come a point where the state of California is going to collapse, in your opinion? Well, no, because the weather's too nice. Oh, you know? oh, of I course. Mean, That's yeah, you go to, you go to Houston, it's muggy as hell. You got mosquitoes, Florida humidity, you know, hurricanes, all types of problems. But California's nice. And, you know, yeah. you got the ocean, you got the yachts, you still got Hollywood a little bit, you got the beaches. So I say it's always be a tourist destination. Yeah. Now is a migratory safe haven, you know, which is good and yeah, I've, bad. I've seen but, the bottom of it. I mean, when I go to T-Mobile, and I speak Spanish, you know, very well, but I can't speak my own language in my own T-Mobile, and they don't understand me. It, it becomes an issue. That's know? a trip. You see, I, I have a hard time understanding when you tell me that. Yeah. And in, even with us, we communicate in, I think, Spanish, right? Is Google Translate good enough Spanish? It's a little different. So, like, But I, I kind of find out that it's yeah, not it's not real Spanish, Spanish enough. So there's Mexican Spanish yeah. and there's Spanish Spanish, like Castellano they call it. And Castellano is a little different, it's a little more proper, it's a little more put together. But Mexican Spanish is a little more slang, it's south of the border. Yeah. It's what you and I are used to from the Paisas. But um, yeah, you got to know the difference between the two. They sound a little different. It's like someone with a British accent and an American yeah. accent. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> that was that was a shocker for me. I was like, dude, come on, that's you know. You learn I, things I learn. every day. I to learn. You know, yeah. but just like I tell you and tell everyone else, you make a million more dollars in your life if you just learn Spanish. You know, as much as you may not like to, or may be hard or difficult, it's an obstacle. I think everyone should overcome. That's why even with my daughter, I'm teaching her Spanish and she's infancy, and that's Bro, how she's not to. even a year old. Yeah, but she's she's getting talked to every day in multiple languages, three languages: English, Spanish, and Italian every day to develop her brain, her cognition, yeah. her motor skills. And, you know, even at the age she's at, she's highly developed. So um, yeah. oh. it works. It works. I love yeah. that kid. Yeah. Yeah. Who can up with some candy, dog? Oh, and, uh, here we go. What's up with the candy box? Exclusive sponsored by De La Rosa himself. Thank you, Enrique. This is from Mazatlan Candy Fortune. Across the border? From. It's not spiked with anything. <laughs> you never know, but <laughs> hopefully not. 
Um, it's from Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, and it's going to be one of our new candy sponsors. Here's candy sponsors. What's that uh, green one? I'll take the little one. This one. one. This one? Oh, yeah. It's like a warhead, I think. Woo! Perfect. So, De La Rosa is um, basically the Hershey's man of Mexico, the largest candy mm -hmm. producer in all of Mexico, Latin America. And we're potentially going to be working with him and doing some business with him and helping each other grow our initiatives. Oh, this so, is good, man. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. one of our goals. Oh, I'm good. Thank you. Uh, of, uh, when I when I go to Guadalajara this weekend, I'm going to be meeting with the top people, you know, government bodies, um, chief of police's uh, top top people, and we're going to be touring throughout all the factories and putting together several deals. A potential art museum on the way. Stay tuned for that. Uh, international warehouses on the way. Stay tuned for that, and as well as international multi-nation opportunities to distribute from say california down to houston down to guadalajara down to the port of manzanillo from manzanillo to philippines free trade agreement between mexico and the philippines so there's so much potential here i see with mexico and the latin american people that i think it's time to bridge the gap in our industry and with furniture and as well as media because a lot of them now, a lot of the movies and films and studios are being filmed in Mexico. No way. Yeah. Like it's American huge, movies? Huge. Monterrey is a huge, huge area they're filming. Uh, movies, they're doing a movie on Pancho Villa in Monterrey. And uh, the dude that I know who owns all the pharmacies in Mexico, his son is the one producing it. And he's going to get us involved with the Pancho Villa movie. And he may need to do some studio work with us as well. So That's good news. Yeah, yeah. So there's well, a lot of exciting things. But the the studio is not filming American movies. It's, it's filming Mexican movies. Yeah, it's films okay. la like Spanish movies. Yeah. They do get translated to English, of course. But um, yeah, they're like culturally authentic Spanish Mexican movies. Yeah. Okay, makes sense. Like the whole city. Um, a lot so of it. like so like Cancun, like, um, Tulum, a lot of those places. They're blowing up right now. So as you know, a lot of American business and corporate America is yeah. moving out, and they're all going there. High rises going up, hotels. Casinos, all kinds of stuff. And with that comes entertainment and nightlife and movies and media, celebrities, uh, all kinds of things happening. Huge, huge billions and billions, trillions probably of investments in Mexico right now. I guess they're happening. I mean, I like yeah. Tulum. I like going to Tulum. I, I'm yet to see high-risers there. Yeah, uh, not not necessarily in Tulum, like the jungle area, but you go like Cabo, yeah. you know, San Luis, like any of those little yeah. Puerto Vallarta. Yeah. There's huge high-rises yeah. going on in Puerto Vallarta. Yeah, I've seen, those, I've seen those, yeah. Yeah, those places I'm talking, like the key cities, you know. But Tulum's going to have really nice resorts and hotels. Huge resorts come in there, huge. So they have a different kind of commercial structure. But nonetheless, as commercial <laughs> real estate's falling in America, is going to tank, is going to drop really, really bad. And, you know, the, the big money is holding on to all the cash to pick up that real estate. All the outside investors are there going to other countries. China's pouring in money to there and selling here and, you know what's happening so it's a huge movement yeah i know what's happening yeah and within there i'm going to ensure that cube world usa and cube world media and us and our joint ventures and our businesses get intertwined in that huge mix and that huge change and shift of economic powers i would say that's going to be happening for making mexico one of the world's most formidable economies that is ever seen do you think mexico is really kind of in the process of becoming one oh totally because their work ethic they work a lot harder than americans in general you know i know i work alongside paisa people all the time you know how it is yeah 12 hours 16 hours 20 hours a day nothing yeah, that is 20 hour day it's normal dude it's not here you know oh, i'll complain about my union bro i need my eight hours i need to call my attorney i need to call my rep i need to call my doctor all this fucking shit people do is fucking hella annoying <laughs> and i'm sick and tired of all the complaining and all the bullshit that people are doing all over the country all over the world so sick and tired that i don't even have any more employees now everybody is an owner a franchisee a joint venture partner or a subcontractor and i'll tell you what yeah, since i made learned our lessons he learned it the hard way so did I. <laughs> and ever since i did that i haven't ever been happier i haven't ever had a smoother sale and things are going much better now much much better so you know like i always say we must adapt and overcome to survive wow. you have to adapt and overcome if you don't you just die you're just like all the rest of the fish who didn't evolve. We're too short, too weak, too tired, too meek to go up and stand up for what they believe in and chase their dreams. So that that's what we really got to do. As this world's going to change in this crazy time and evolve and turn into who knows what, we must be ready for that. And so that's what we're doing now. We're getting ready so we don't have to ever worry about anything in the future. 
And by the time that everyone else who wasn't ready is trying to get ready will already be far ahead as you're seeing happen in all the industries we're involved in. Yeah, it's, a, it's time, man. It's just doing doing shit over time. That's, how, I, that's what I learned. It's just levels to it, you know, everything. Even the bookshelf behind us. The, the it started with a small, small like... Started with the small show, shelf. Yeah. Then yeah. we got the African mahogany. We did that big yeah. liquidation in Newport Beach. And then we started filling it up with and the, the other ones, company, with the rocket companies, with the space stuff. company, the tech we companies, work. the WeWorks of the world, the Microsofts, all yeah. of them just piling. And this is just a little bit of it. You know, there's all more spread out. But as we fill this up and get more and the, the media keeps growing, the locations keep growing, people will see the progress and change. And you'll be able to bookmark it and look back on these videos and recall what I'm saying. And you're going to test the marker of success. And that's when you're really going to know where you're at. It's hard to see when every single day we're making change and progress and it's little by little. It's 1%, it's 1%, 1%. 1%. But as you know, if you do 1% every single day for 100 days, you're twice as good. 100%. Do it for 300 days, you're three times as good. So that's what we got to do every single day. And people will see it. The viewership will grow. The leadership will grow. The mentorship will grow. The programs, the speeches are already grown for you. You know, you've had your success of speeches. You saw me go up on the international stage and speak for us and get a standing ovation. So the speeches will continue and people will now hear our story, hear our legacy live. And they'll know there's no motherfucking bullshit that they're seeing this shit live right here in Huntington Beach, California today. And they know that we're putting out content yeah. all the time, every single day, 24 seven. And there is no off button to our channel. That is what people no. are going to remember. The difference between you and I and everyone else is there is no off button. It's all gas, no brakes. And that's where we're at. And you can, guys can watch us 24-7, 365. Follow the link below at, to Q World Media live stream channel all the time. For you fans of EDM music, house music, different branches of EDM, for po Purpose or Pleasure podcast episodes. Are we going to throw in the uh, live liquidations and stuff? Yeah. 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 We're, we're going to show you guys. How corporate America gets torn down from the inside out. Yeah. You'll I, don't, get, I don't know anybody who does that. No one. It'll be the first yeah. one. I've always wanted to do like how they do yeah. live PD, you know, yeah. see the police go out for people yeah. live. Oh, it's real. People sweat and choking like it's all not staged. That's what people want to see. Yeah. So I'm going to do the same thing in our buildings when we're pulling out Starbucks, when we're pulling out Google, when we're pulling out Facebook and getting the nicest interior art assets, arcade machines, you know, couches, furniture, whatever we pull out of there. I want people to see that and I want them to have an opportunity not only to see it, but an opportunity to own it. Mm -hmm. And they'll have a piece of American corporate history in their house or in their office for a fraction of the price of what they'd pay new. I mean, no cap, man. We'll come, we'll come across some, some really cool things. Like the arcade machine. That was so random. Yeah. That was so random. The dude. pool table from the, the uh, Van Nuys Airport. Where did the pool table come from? Came from the, the private jet. Oh, I thought that was yours already. It was mine. Like you bought it. No, I didn't buy it. I liquidated the pool table. Yeah. I don't need to buy anything because everyone gives me something at some yeah. point. So yeah, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty awesome. That's the beautiful part about yeah, liquidation. Yeah, a few pieces here on this wall come from a few different big, big, big companies. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, some, a lot of some of these books and stuff, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, it's exciting. No. And we're going to have um, live DJs, uh, particularly EDM DJs. Eventually, we have some hip-hop influence as well here. Um, we're working on a bunch of talent, local as well as nationwide, as well as international talent, well known to startup people. And we're going to be promoting them. We're going to be giving you guys a safe haven and a home and an incubator space to come down here, sit, relax, chill, learn, and be immersed within the culture, the music, and the theater of what is Cube World Media and Purpose Over Pleasure podcast. I mean, you guys have all the options. Give them, give them the, the options. Oh, we you do streaming, everything here. We do recording, studio, recording, studio recording, audio editing, DJing, visuals, producing, um, DJ lessons, pr production. Um, you could rent out the studios, uh, several rooms, several different themes. Mm -hmm. um, we could do, do events. You could do um, stages, catering of high-end art. I mean, we have all types of different tools and repertoire in our arsenal that could really, you know, make quite a successful production for anybody, whether you're a professional artist or a startup person or a businessman or a woman or an athlete. We're here to help people. And I'm here to particularly give people a chance and opportunity who didn't have the chance or wouldn't have other have had the chance had they have not have met us or have been here. Man, so trip out. yeah, that's my goal. You know, as I know what out. it's like to, to not have things and I know it's like to have a lot of things. And from being really broke to really rich to really poor broke to really rich again, you never want to go really broke again. And so my whole thing is to show people and guide them to never go broke again, to learn how to 
fish for themselves instead of asking for fish, essentially. Yeah. And that's what I'm best at doing is inspiring and motivating and showing people and leading them to the water. Now it's up to them if they drink. I, I can't help them. But as you can see with the, some great new people, we got Rhett and Cameron and others on board. Now live stream is happening instead of recording. Now production is going. Now the Pioneer is set up. Now the, the pool table and all the lights are plugged in. Bluetooth coming. Surround sound. VIP ropes are outside. The limo's outside. You know, we've just got everything we need, you know, to pull up and make anything happen any time of day we want. It's okay. almost like it exists. People just don't know. Like, motherfuckers, we're here. <laughs> like, you guys can just call us. Yeah. That's it. You know, the link will be down below. Yeah, you yeah. Do anything you need it is And, right and the here. number, too. Tell them about the number that we got <laughs> oh. for the Cube World Media number. So you'll see this in the link below. It's 888-777-AT-1G. Simple. At 1G. Eight, you eight, have eight, to add seven, 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 seven. Yeah, the, the three sevens, three, the three, three eights, three sevens. Yeah. and then at number one G. One, I mean, one what one else G. is it? You know, that's what that's what dude. we are. That's where we're going. Man, I bet you Andrew Tate could even get that number. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. I mean, dude, it takes some research and uh, knowing some people. Was the top and... G number available? What, what the, the numbers that affiliated with T, O, P, and G? No, no. There was no. hardly Did any more check? numbers. Yeah, I checked everything. Uh -huh. yeah, I spent a whole day on checking numbers. That would be sick, dude. 888 top G? Yeah. That would be gangster. Yeah, absolutely. The thing is, they ran out of eight hundred numbers, yeah. so eight hundred doesn't dot com is eight eight eight's almost gone. Then they're doing eight eight six eight six six. Then they do um five five five. So they have a few more left, but so many people bought up those numbers. They ran out of eight hundred numbers. Yeah, there's okay. very few, and then people sell them. People give them up here or there, but most all of them are gone. Like you can't get any cool eight hundred number anymore. They're gone. Damn. Yeah, just like dot coms. You know, dot coms. There a lot of them are going away, and people yeah. are doing. Dot .co, dot .io, yeah. dot .xo, different platforms, right, to host the names that they want. So you tell me people sites. have used up to 9,999,999 1-800 numbers. Yeah. Almost 10 million. One, one short of 10 million. Almost. That's a lot. There's, That's a lot of businesses, dude. Yeah. No, it's been around a long time. 30 yeah. years. 30 so years. Think about it. Yeah. But I know the time where, like 40 years. Is, it, is it still the same? Like, you can get that number for yourself. You don't have to be a businessman. It doesn't have to be a business. You can get a private number. Or is it only yeah. business now? Is it still the same I mean, way? it's supposed to be for businesses, but I think anybody, if you yeah. fill out the paperwork right, you can register for a toll-free number. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Because I knew this this one guy, it was like over a decade ago. It was like, yeah, I got myself a I got myself a 1-800-something number. I'm like, what was it? He was like something, I love 69 or some stupid <laughs> shit like that. I was like, okay, dude. You genius idea. Yeah, because I like fucking giving it out to bitches and, and they, they like it. I was like, oh, you got your priorities fucked up. Yeah, yeah. Imagine if you would put all that effort into business. I know, I, I know. <laughs> then he would have had a lot more bitches, wouldn't he? Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's <laughs> that true. You mentioned one important thing. Uh, uh, I want to ask, I want our public uh, to hear, because I've asked for that question before. Doesn't matter what sequence we're starting, right? Being, being, being rich, being poor, being rich, being poor, and then you never want to go poor again. Yeah. I noticed across across the line a lot of successful people, including yourself. You know, you've been you've been rich multiple times, you've been broke multiple times, and you know you're on top again. I don't come from a rich family, okay, so I don't know what it's like to to grow up to grow up wealthy and, and and rich. What is it that these people have, or some kind of attraction, or is it the memories, or is it the accolades that they had, or is it the life that they had that makes them want to like? Mm. I'm not gonna start off with this shit. I'm gonna go back to where I was because I liked it. I mean, you're one of them. That's I always ask you those oh, questions. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a very good example of that. Yeah. Right. So I'll tell you from my experience, and I'll tell you from what I think maybe other people's experiences. So for me, it's 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 a lot to it, right? So I have a lot of people depending on me. I have a lot of people that died. You know, in front of me, I have a lot of people that basically handed me over their career and their lives in my hands so I could be where I'm at. And I have a lot of people that believe in me and I have people that dream of being where I'm at, who are locked up behind prison bars that will never see the light of day again until they get granted parole because they're doing life in prison. And they're praying for me and rooting me on every single day. So when you have that type of motivation, that type of people behind you and that type of fire, there's no putting it out. There's just no putting it out. I wake up like I'm on fire every single day. And I feel the energy and I'd never stop. So that's why I'm 24 seven legit. And I live and breathe and speak and eat that shit. And, um, yeah, you know, when you live and you are authentic and you are yourself and you feel the Phoenix within yourself rise, there is no stopping you, but you have to feel it. If you don't feel that, then there's an issue. Then you get depressed. Then you have anxiety. 
then you have issues and and some people even kill themselves you know it gets really drug addiction it gets yeah, really bad you don't have a purpose you fucking yeah end up doing stupid shit yeah escaping. or or they don't believe in their purpose you know that they can't do it anymore is they're washed up it's, it's sad and um i try to uplift those people i try to bring them up every single day being the yeah. former therapist that i was and psychologist that i was not being where i started and what i studied in college it definitely holds close to home for me so to answer your question I know what it's like and I will never ever falter or fail unless I die. That's the only way to take me down to lock me up or, or me dead. There's no quit in me other than that, but I'm different than most people. So now other people that I've seen who have become wealthy and then lost it and then came back, it's pretty rare, but a few people do do it. And they had a why they had a motivation, you know, they, they had, Oh, I, this person said I couldn't do this on that day. And that's why I'm going to do this. Or they didn't believe in me or I was ousted out of this circle or this situation or this club or, or this job. And it's like a vendetta almost. And so when you have that vendetta about yeah, you, that's yeah. what makes you lethal. Yeah. You know, um, it's, it's anyone could have the vendetta. It's just like the mask, right? You see that movie V for Vendetta? Yeah. Anonymous dude with the mask. I yeah. love that mask. That's it's really anonymous cool. st still uses. The, is, is there yeah, the mask is just a symbol. Doesn't matter if you're wearing the Freddy Cougar or face or Jason mask or the anonymous mask or the yeah. saw mask. Yeah. The point is that they're believing in a symbol and the character and something so strongly that they're willing to die for it and full heartedly put every single ounce of their strength, power, being, energy, and finance into it. So when you could plug in that hard and press forward on people, very few people are going to stop your momentum. It's like a juggernaut effect. So imagine the juggernaut just coming through, boom, not even going to stop them. But if you're starting out slow, starting out slow. Even if you're hella strong like the Hulk, it's going to take some time to get momentum. But once you get your momentum, it's difficult. So I would say that that's what people strive for. That's what people are looking for all the time. And, and that's what I preach. That's what I teach. That's yeah. some example of. You know, you could take everything away from me today. I'll be successful again tomorrow. It doesn't matter. How many fucking people have you bitch ass motherfuckers out there trying to stop me, try to sue me, try to do some weird ass, fake ass shit. I'm fucking sick and tired of it. You'll see no matter fucking what money, no money, places, buildings, cars, boats, jets or no jets. You'll see me be successful no matter fucking what. So fuck you all. <laughs> so that's what I have to hey, say. Hey, I, I, I know the reason why you say that because I'm right there with you, bro. I see people trying to fucking outsmart or trying to take advantage of us and show oh, you. Dude, today. People are always trying to come up to your ass. My fucking credit card got frauded today, dude. My American Express. And you won't believe. I, we know who the dude is. We just said his name right before this. That we should name a punching bag after. Are him. you serious? No. Motherfucker, dude. Are you serious? Fucking. Wow. Went to the New Haven Packing Materials, called them as me, used my Amex to charge. It wasn't much. It's just the audacity of Are people. Are you serious? Like my own friend, my own person, vendor, this, that, oh, fucking. Oh, man. Bro, stole credit card, frauded me with my own wow. credit card. And I saw it on my charge. I said, what is this? And they said, oh, that's your invoice for all the rentals you did in Kansas City, Missouri. I said, I was the dude acquiring the materials, not the one doing the labor rentals. Yeah. He says, oh, yeah. someone called in the name of Cube World and used your credit card. Wow. And I said, well, that's fraud. You need to return it right now. We're going to have an issue. Wow. And the dude was so shocked. And he's like, I didn't even know. I thought that was you and shit. Well, that's how we order from them. He, yeah, we, he literally thought them. it was. A, I said, motherfuck. So they stole from you and they stole from me. And they said, oh, we're going to go after him. Oh, man. man I, could, I cannot believe Cheap that shit, Cheap ass dude. motherfuckers, dude. Bitch ass. Wow. So, dude, that's crazy, man. You, See, that's like you, you, you <laughs> petty ass shit, you know. I'm like pissed right now. I'm about to pause the episode. Dude, to go, I don't pop. We're to go about punch, to, pop. to go punch Bob in the face. Yeah, let, let me go, Bob. Where you at? Bob, Bob, Bob is a <laughs> tell me about Bob, we'll dude. We, Bob. we got Bob. Yeah, dude. we got Bob, Bob lives here. Bob lives here. Exclusive uh, punching bag, big, yeah. huge X with kick legs for Muay Thai stances. Every and they're actually sponsoring us. And oh yeah, we're a vendor of yeah. their company. We'll give them a shout out on another episode. We use their and send them the, the shit out of it. And send some more samples of Bob down here so we can beat his ass when we get pissed off instead of fucking someone <laughs> oh, up in person. Man, that's hilarious. Yeah, we have to do all these like calming effects around here. I, I learned level. about this shit, bro. Yeah, it's high stress yeah. levels, dude. High stress levels. Speaking of stress, man, like okay entrepreneurship is a whole different level of stress bro like I'm, I'm i'm gonna be honest man i mean i'm a cop i come from that background i've been doing this long enough i've done some crazy shit i've done some a lot of dangerous shit yeah. i've done some cool shit and i've done some stressful shit but entrepreneurship is a whole new level oh, like it's, it's not like uh, i'm scared but it's it's a, it's a different level of stress way more stressful way more like right now i just Kenny. found out somebody trying to fuck us 
right now while the podcast well, episode. they kind of did <laughs> no dude it gets your heart going yeah. anxiety blood yeah. pressure everything um i'd say there's no stress like business yeah I mean, nothing so. honestly unless, I mean, unless maybe maybe in prison it's yeah, solitary yeah, confinement yeah, yeah, yeah if you're in the hole like in the yeah. shoe yeah it's pretty stressful though yeah but um other than that there's no stress like business because i've been through every type of stress on earth i've seen every courtroom and every court side you could imagine and I'll tell you what's the most stressful thing is what we just talked about. But second to that is getting fucked over in business and backstabbed by everyone you think is your friend, everyone you care about, everyone you thought was your family. And, you know, even at some points, like me with my ex wives and ex-families, your own family backstabs you with the own people you work with in your business. So it hurts so fucking bad. You know, it's, it's a cold, dark, lonely world. And it's not for everyone. And the pain is really fucking real. And it's a it's it's lonely at the top, but you know when it you get there, the top. it's pretty fucking nice, and the view is spectacular, view is spectacular. and you're looking down at all the motherfucking cockroaches, yeah. wishing that they weren't fucking there, but you need them to do everything for you so you could keep standing at the top. So that's really what it comes down to, you know. You have to understand what it takes, and you have to be willing to live with what it takes. You know, I heard a lot of famous people say this through my life: Christian Ronaldo, Conor McGregor. I mean, several people I've I've heard say this they said if i give you the map if i give you what i have if i tell you exactly how to be ceo of cube world how to be ceo of purpose over pleasure of a media or whatever we're Cristiano doing ronaldo said there yeah will you fucking do it fuck no you bitch ass motherfuckers People most of you will not do it a few of you will and all the haters i hope you blow the fucking comments of you bitch ass motherfuckers or the lazy motherfuckers typing right there watching us over here talking shit to you so fuck you again too you know who you remind me you remind me of steve eckert i'm gonna cut this clip i'm gonna send it to steve that's your fucking protege right here this is how you talk to just you dumb motherfucker <laughs> you gotta meet that guy man. is he guy cool is savage yeah. he talks he'll go on stage in front of hundreds of people like you fucking lazy motherfuckers man get your shit together yeah that yeah. guy's really cool man he's a, he's a marine so he's really cool oh character yeah uh, he's, he's, he's a good guy. I'm, I'll invite him here. I want you to meet him. Yeah, he come, He always comes with a son, Tyson. That kid is a savage. That kid is a fucking entrepreneur at 12. Yeah, he's like started his own LLC and shit. He's like a fitness and, and mastermind company for kids, bro. <laughs> that kid's a savage. I like that kid. That's awesome. That's something like your 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 son would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If I had a son. But You're going to have now, a son, man. You're going to have a son. For now, my, my daughters, they're definitely yeah. going to. You're going to have a son, and little... what's going to happen in your life? You're going to mature in a different level. Yeah, you think so? I know so. I want you to have a son. I want you to have a son. I'm going to have a son. <laughs> All right. I want you I'm gonna to have, have a son. If I'm, if I'm not going to have a son, which, which I know I will, I'm going to adopt a son. Oh, there you Dude, go. I would love to give to give a, a, another child a, a, a home, you know? And yeah. you know my story. Um, but yeah, for sure. You're going to have a son and he's going to fucking change you, man. I, I guarantee I've seen that happen before. You know what my and son will be? And I'll make sure I'll, I'll, I'll help you, guide you in, in the right direction. The capuchin monkey son that I bring from Mexico next week. <laughs> You're not bringing a fucking monkey, dude. dude. We got the room How right there you, in the I stairs, know, but, dude. but he's going to take a shit everywhere, man. You could change his diapers. All kinds of you animals. love changing diapers, dude. I know you want to be a dad. Yeah, but not for a monkey. <laughs> yeah, it'll be our little oh, baby. Man. It'll be the adopted cube world monkey. Right, he's he's going to tear all the fucking cables <laughs> and shit, man. Oh, and I love crazy. I love little monkeys. Yeah. I, mean, I love animals, period. You love animals. Yeah. I think they're super cute, man. Like, I, I follow these, these pages on Instagram, like really mini, miniature monkeys. Yeah. Like in Indonesia and Philippines and Thailand. They have them as pets, dude. Yeah, they're I so to, fucking cute. I used to have one when I was a what kid. What kind? A uh, capuchin, a little. A capuchin. Small. My my grandma brought it for oh, me. How did you me. have a capuchin? They're illegal, bro. My grandma brought it for me from South America. Let's mm. just put it that way. Uh, let's put it that way. Okay. <laughs> yeah, she was connected, and she <laughs> there's no bring, statue of limitation. So she used to bring me a oh, capuchin. Yeah, but uh, she um, yeah. she's brought me a lot of animals. So I was raised with exotic animals. Yeah. That's why I Animal. love animals. You know, that's why animals I rescue cool. exotic animals. Yeah, I'll have to get some more. See, I'm just traveling too much right now. I spend a lot of time with them. But some of my friends, as you know, have tigers and <laughs> yeah. all kinds of other animals. So I'll go over there and just play with don't, theirs. Don't get now. a tiger, man. Oh, you need don't. a big ranch to have a tiger. Don't, you got to yeah, have a sanctuary. Don't, don't get a tiger. Dude, my house can't fit a tiger. <laughs> not right now, it can't. If yeah. I've moved out to the country or something, it could. But I mean, I know somebody who has a big-ass ranch, and if they, you need, the tiger need a place, you know, I'm sure they'll take him. They have other exotic animals there. Maybe I'll work out a deal yeah. with them. Put, yeah. Park the tiger they're, they're, there. They're in Temecula, though, they'll, and I know. <laughs> oh, I hate Temecula. I know. I have a big-ass ranch. With like exotic animals, I zebras, know. camels. I used to have exotic. Me and Nicole's been there. I've been multiple times. Yeah. I know. I used to live. Big over ass there. ranch. That yeah, place I know you do. That place sucks. Yeah. Fuck Riverside County too, if you're listening. <laughs> Just cause. Just cause. All right, let's bring you back a second, right? You you talked about something, and, and I wanna. Uh, I was thinking about the other day, 
about purpose in life, right? Because, yeah. you know, the purpose of a pleasure, my whole purpose, me finding my purpose, that's what I preach, that's what I ask to tell other people. This is what men fucking need. Like, men need purpose, mm -hmm. okay? I think my purpose in your life is to make you believe that there are people out there who you can trust because you motherfucker don't trust anybody and i don't blame you because yeah. you had literally family backstab yeah. you like i yeah. know i don't blame you but i think my purpose purpose in life is to make you believe it's possible your purpose in my life is to teach me well one of her purposes i think because you teach me a lot of things, a lot of things yeah. how to do business ethically oh yeah because I always come to you for advice. Hey, is this ethical or not? Ethical yeah. or not? Sometimes, like today, I'm like, fuck, this This is some bullshit. Like, yeah. this customer of mine, fuck me, dude. Yeah. Like, went behind my back with a person we used oh, to employ. That, dude. That dude's and, and then now that person fucked them and they're coming back to me because the, the, the because money was paid to that. me. But different story. Let's go back to my previous topic, right? Yeah. We'll revisit that story, the bitch ass client. Yeah, him too. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's, and that he's person. Gonna, they're coming after him too. But, he's going to be lucky if. Oh, yeah. You know? But hold on, take you back. That's to, a whole I'm, other I'm, story. A, we'll, we'll get to it next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's what I'm. I I thought about the other day. Really serious. I'm like, what yeah. is my purpose? So like in your life, yeah. you, you and, know, and Nicole's life, and the people, different people's lives, and the guys that I coach. I'm I'm all about ethics, and that's the one thing. I that's why I love teaching. I don't teach too many people, as you know. But I brought you on as one of my last students because I seen a lot of potential in you. And I knew that you got a good heart and a good moral compass and a good effort and you work hard. So with those four things, you could build a successful businessman out of them. I'm, I've done it many times. I know I'm already doing it. Look how successful you are yeah. in such a short amount of time. I mean, people would be blown away if they knew where you came from. I don't realize it un until I start either writing it down or like looking at numbers. Oh, yeah. And plus you saw all the people yeah. who came up to you at the conference wanting to take pictures with you and yeah. you know, ask who you were. They knew Dude, who you were. that was a trip. I was, right? was I telling you? Was I telling Nicole? You told me about it. Yeah, that was a trip, man. Yeah. I was like. That's a big deal, dude. Yeah. It's it was like, a little bit shocker. Uh, it was cool. Like, when I gave the speech, too, and I had, like, all the Mexican people run up to me, and mezcal and tequila, this, that, offer me the ranches. It's a great feeling, you know, to be embraced and loved. But even better when it's people who are going to change your life and make a difference, you know, for you and your community and your people. So you're getting there. You know, like I told you, level assist. Every episode is going to be a better level, more books, nicer cars, another limo, a yacht on the way. Then after the yacht comes the private jet. So I'll fuck with the yacht. Oh, do the yachts coming. Limos, I'm, I'm all right on, but I, I like water. We'll, we'll go halves on the yacht then. That's what we'll Fuck do. It. We'll park it right hey, there in Huntington hey, Harbor. Time. No, building first, yeah. man. <laughs> Assets, not liabilities. Yeah, yeah, Assets, yeah. not liabilities. Well, um, that's why you didn't buy the Ferrari. Yeah. You know, it's Remember, better it's better to have a limo because at least the limo will could turn you a profit and make money, and it'll also cater to your clients and give a different level of class and eloquence that will set you apart from your competition. Versus me just driving a Ferrari, it would be nice just drive people I like around and look cool, but um, hands are always tied, never making money, and not using the asset to produce. Same thing I thought about a private jet. So I was talking to some companies that lease out private jets on apps like Jet Smarter and yeah. stuff. And they were telling me that um, we get a G5 or a G6 jet that they'd be happy to sub lease the jet from us and contracted it out of the John Wayne Airport. You, and You know, I, I have a friend who's a pilot, right? Private jet pilot. If you need have that flight. dude fly. So ask how much he'll charge us uh, to, per flight yeah. or per year. One of the two. Yeah, he's on, he's on standby. Like he, I, I'm not going to name drop his clients, but they just call him. He was like, yeah, okay, yeah, all right, I'll be there. See what I, I mean? Like, it's all lining up. Just like the sprinkler guy that just came in, you know? Fire department tried to give us a trip, violation man. and fuck with us, which they're doing their job. I get it. Yeah. Nothing to the fire department. You're just doing what you got to do, which sucks. It's a hard job. But um, sucks for us. Then uh, we deal with the client. You're too busy. I happen to be here, and I help him out. He wanted something small. Yeah, but they tried to trick us, man. They, they came in out early. Oh, they did. Yeah, oh, they they, I was not the assigned time because I even uh, emailed the day before. Yeah, and who sends three people at the same time? Three. Yeah. Oh, they, they try like, to I'm it. familiar with that system. Like, yeah. this is like a, it's like a code enforcement for fire. Yeah. Like, police has code enforcement. Exactly. And that's that's like the, the nerd, code nerd section of fire department. They're not, firefighters don't count them as firefighters. They're like, they're nerds. Because <laughs> I have friends with firefighters like, ah, oh, shit, man, you got hit up by a nerd, nerd squad. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But, so, I can't blame him. But um, then the sprinkler guy comes in who could fix all the problems, and he needs furniture. So, yeah. who knows? Trade some furniture, fix the problems, keep it here. If not, then fuck it. Then tear it all down and just turn it into an empty space for fun. So, it doesn't matter. I mean, it just 
figure it out. Adopt, but adapt. We're, we're adapt and overcome. No matter mm. what, we have our studios, we have our media company. I mean, we could store media equipment and it pay everything here. It doesn't even matter. The point is we have the real estate. I mean, this is a $10 million building we're in right here in center of Huntington Beach, you know, and it's at full access, full rain. And we haven't rain to expand into the other buildings. They're building almost half a million square feet across the street. We have first right of refusal on that. So our empire will just continue to grow as long as we put in the work and are here to do it. It doesn't matter what we're doing. We're just going to keep doing things and keep making opportunities. Yeah. Shit, man, there's not going to be shortage of furniture, that's for sure. No. I mean, we fly to these states. We see these buildings. I was just in Arizona, same shit as we saw in Chicago, yeah. as we saw in, in other states. in it's Detroit. Bad. Yeah. All yeah, over empty the country, buildings. dude. Empty buildings. So 50% of corporate America is probably empty at this point. I know because I've liquidated it. Like 60, it dude. Chicago? Maybe downtown more. Chicago maybe 60%. More. They really? don't want to admit it, but maybe more. Yeah. Well, look, when we're going to U.S. Bank and Fox Theater and all these big buildings, and they're telling us it's 50%. Yeah. That's just them. They got a reason to lie. It's Imagine like the other people who are worse off than them. I mean, we're right there in downtown LA in those big high risers. We're, we're top going notch there. Security and we're shit. going there this Saturday. You got to yeah. do ID check, background yeah. check, picture, all that shit. That's just so get... annoying, bro. Oh, like, every time shit. in downtown, dude, I check in, shit. check out. You press the elevator, you got to check in with security. To tell like, them bitch, I can right. press the button myself. I don't need you to walk me into the elevator and, and scan your yeah. key. Like, <laughs> I'm okay. Well, it's because it's so ghetto there. LA's such a shithole these days. It's so sad. And that's yeah. where I was born. I was born in Santa Monica. And it's fucking sad. I can't even go to my own hometown anymore. When you were born in Santa Monica, I don't think it was as bad as it is right now. No, it's super I, nice. And then yeah, now Santa 90, Monica is a 90s? shithole. I know that. It's a shithole. Yeah, I was just there. Three tweakers almost attacked me when I yeah. was Yeah, yeah, dude. Over there. All dude, my friends, you know, place. trust me. Like I, I know how bad Santa Monica is. If there's yeah. anybody in this whole building, that, that would be me. Who oh, knows? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, dude, it's it's the whole L.A. Anything, that's why I moved down, you know, moved out of L.A. You had to, dude. It's just annoying. It's sad, too. There's no opportunities there. It's no a safe more. haven, dude. Safe haven for just rampant criminals, rampant radical people and communists and socialists and immigrant terrorists. There's fucking terrorists everywhere, dude, from, I don't even want to say the flag so we don't lose viewership, but you know what flags are running over yeah. there, all kinds of terrorists blocking the streets and shit. Bro, I was watching a video today. Of, oh, somebody recorded a video of a guy running in the streets of L.A., in handcuffs with his hands handcuffed behind his back with a knife sticking out of his back and he's bleeding really he's got a knife sticking out of his uh, of, yeah i'll oh, show you a video dude. And only in la bro how about the, the dude that just got shot for his lamborghini and his rolex at south coast plaza at bloomingdale's he got blasted in his leg are you serious right here dude he's driving a lamborghini when, when? Dude, two days ago some fool like me was driving a lamborghini with a rolly and they the dude came up boom he didn't want to get up his rolly and blasted him Oh man! Why, oh, dude? sick, oh, dude! Right dude. where you and I go shopping. Yeah, it's crazy. yeah. We were just there. We we're just having lunch. We we're there. just in that parking yeah. lot, blasted him. Dude. Yeah, I was. Yeah, what the day after. Well, I went shopping there on the, Saturday. You literally, literally on Sunday. two, three days after we left, he got blasted right there. <sighs> this is the shit that that I always saw happen in L.A., bro. Dude, like, no, I've handled I've County. handled calls like that. I've had calls where people would get robbed at gunpoint at their house, at their own gate, or when they enter the gate, because these fuckers track them follow oh, yeah. them from the from the Sweet restaurants God. from the clubs from the shop these ones are, they didn't follow him they just fucking hit him up right there at the, at the shop at the, at at the, the parking valet. lot at the valet at the valet yeah next thing what right inside the store that's what's gonna happen that's what's gonna keep happening well, i mean i'm surprised dude, actually, for, this dude needs to get smoked dude there's so much just blasted that dude who's trying to rob him well know? it's because we inherited a lot of uh east coast gangs during covid and they have different style they're there they have a raw style they do that kind of shit in east coast a lot yeah, i don't know if i ever told you during covid California's number one EDD fraud state out there. Yeah. yeah Everybody was time. getting that. Like, bro, we used to pull over Lambos, Ferraris, McLarens with straps, with dope, and stacks of EDD cards. Stacks, bro. So during COVID, they all flew there. And I don't know if you know, but in the East Coast, you know how here we have Bloods and Crips? Over there, they have uh, Woos and Chos. But then it's so complicated in East Coast. It's woos and chose taking like Bloods and Crisp, but they're integrated and it's by block and it's fucking, it's a mix. So all of them immigrated to California, in Arizona, but California started doing fraud. All of a sudden during COVID, because of the money, all the beef stopped. The West and, and you know, the, the Bloods and the Crips weren't shooting each other as much. They were all making money. And guess what? EDD finished a couple of years ago, right? COVID I went down. That. I know all of a sudden, shootings went up, robberies went up, all of this violent crime went up because now they're back to what they know they do to do best. Yeah. Rob, shoot, kill, you know, and do yeah. all kind of shit. So, so, 
that's where we're at now. That's why this shit is happening. Because before it wasn't like that. Before they wouldn't have such low, not say sophisticated. And on top of that, you add all the immigrant gangs that we have right now. Oh, we have, they have the crews that jam yeah. uh, um, uh, webcam signals. Cru uh, crews that have uh, di different crews from like South 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 America. I'm not gonna name countries, but South American crews that come in and do they do like violent shit. Do very strategic shit. They like uh, follow people. They they do home invasions. And they jam like cameras and signals. They do some crazy shit. So it, it's high tech. Yeah. High tech, yeah. And to us, to law enforcement, dude, it was like, damn, we haven't seen this before. Yeah, I've I've seen them all, dude. I've been all around the world and seen all types of crime. And I know a lot of these people, you know, from different crime organizations, cartels, and all types of things. And it's universal, dude. And now it's spilling the international crime into our streets because yeah. the borders are wide open, and you can hop through a hole in the fence Literally. and beat anybody Literally. from anywhere and you know mexico doesn't care if you're coming over here so they're happy to kick you out of their country yeah they're gonna fucking keep them fuck dude and last so, time i went to mexico i went to puerto puerto vallarta but yeah. i forgot bro i saw a lot of black people and i come to find out they're haitians but well, haitians look like black people right but they're haitians mm -hmm. and those are the ones that got stuck they traveled all the way from haiti they made their way to mexico and they kind of kind of stuck there so now we have like haitian neighborhoods in mexico and last I checked, they're like beefing. Like Mexicans are not feeling that vibe, dude. They're like, there's some tension over there. Last I checked, I'm not there, but that's, that's what I heard. Mexican and black people t typically don't get along. You know, there's a lot yeah. of cultural, racial, yeah. like history and hatred. And I'll tell you what, in Mexico, they don't like black people, and over here in LA, they don't like Paisa Mexican people either. It's, a, dude, I've had, <laughs> so I had a, I've, I had a brawl in my warehouse, an 18 foot truck, uh, wheeler truck driver, and he was, you know. Hood from Inglewood, and then I had this Paisa people from Sinaloa, and they fucking got into it, dude, into it. Well, um, fucking, the dude, it was Dolfino. He picked up a fucking screwdriver and then picked it up and shanked the dude in the fucking arm. And the dude freaked out. He fucking tried to get a hammer, hit him, and Dolfino ran away. It was huge. I had him breaking up, leaving it on my warehouse years ago. This was years ago at my old company. And the fucking truck driver, black dude, he got in the fucking 18 wheeler rig that he had his own rig. And as soon as Dolfino got in his fucking car, grrr, boom, he fucking smashed into him with the rig. And he fucking took off. Dolfino almost got killed. And so, is there tension? Yeah, I've fucking seen it in my own building. Yeah. This we, shit's real. We've seen it with our own employees between the Paisas and the uh, Oh, uh, and the Cholos. And, and the Cholos. Oh, dude. they hate each other even just as bad. Yeah. Just as bad. Paisas and Cholos don't get along, man. I've seen that shit on the streets. Yeah. I've seen that shit in business. Yeah. Yeah. They're a different breed, mm -hmm. you know. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, times yeah I take living. everyone as they come. I, I, I don't care as long as the money's green. <laughs> if the money's my own credit card, like before, then I get pretty pissed, regardless what race you are. <laughs> yeah. So... Well, one thing I would say, money is money, but I don't like when, when countries like China and other countries out there as well trying to fuck this country up, bro. Me and you both know that. I mean, look at look what we learned that last time we went to Chicago to to the to Neocon, dude. We, yeah. we we realized who's outsourcing everything. Yeah. That's a monopoly, dude. The whole monopoly. I yeah. mean, they learn from us, but they're doing it. Yeah. How is it that every single big main American made manufacturing company is ordering their shit from you know where every single one of them might as well start doing the same shit too probably save some money bro go order containers from there yeah but yeah. the problem is i I have like i'm a patriot dude i'm a diehard patriot i don't want this country to be f to fucking get worse and collapse so we gotta like put some pump some brakes onto that bro yeah well that's why mexico is wants to be the new china so that's why like mexico and china hate each other by the way i went there and i spoke to the mexican people directly to their government and their citizens and they told me we're in huge competition with China. We're having huge trade tariffs and disagreements with China. And China's holding back a lot of the raw materials, goods, and things that Mexico needs to be a world power in turn. So there's a huge economic struggle going down on there. And I was there with the head of customs and border enforcement. And he's the dude who controls the borders. And he literally told me, he says, if we could work out an agreement with between Mexico and the United States, it'd be much more profitable. And we could cut off the Chinese supply, be more interdependent within our nations. And that's why we'd like to start doing business with you, Kevin, and Cube World. And that's part of my mission, actually, to go there is to combat China and all the bullshit that they're doing and all the high prices and the freight and then the bad quality and not standing behind their work and products and selling us also cancer's products and things of danger and things of malfunction oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. and then bankrupting and folding their companies overnight yeah. and then our people being hurt and dying and having no liability or awareness of that. I knew this was happening. I knew China, obviously... 
they start moving into Mexico for tariff reasons because Daddy Trump was like, no, nah, fuck that. This is your tariff paid. So they, what did they do? They went to Mexico, right? Mm-hmm. But I became irritated when you went there and you came back and you told me that not, they're doing the same shit over there. They're doing it here. They're bringing their own people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And not only are they putting up slave labor for long hours in a oh, day, right? They're okay. also like, you're already building. Like if I was a Mexican, bro, I'd be pissed. Like you're already building. You're already in my land. You have your factory. You're building here. And you're not even giving the job opportunities to my people. You're bringing your own people. Like, well, th- th- Taking you're, over their Now land. you're a fucking cancer. Yeah. This is not a symbiosis. Okay. Yeah. This is, you're a cancer. Yeah. Okay. That's not how a symbiotic relationship works. So that's how I was irritated when, when I learned that from you. I was like, fuck that, dude. Like, we need to step in the middle or do, some, or do something about it, man. Remember that supermarket we dealt with recently? <laughs> you remember? <laughs> there wasn't one person who wasn't Chinese there. Well, a lot of our clients are. But I, I don't want our viewers to believe that we have a problem with that because no. a lot of people we deal with, they're not necessarily the government. They're entrepreneurs, right? Yeah. They're the, we connect with entrepreneurs regardless. But there's a certain level when you go from entrepreneur and become like a governmental puppet, that's a different That's a different story. Yeah. We work with entrepreneurs. Yeah, yeah. They focus influence. on business. I mean, I have like hundreds of Chinese clients that are all very yeah. successful millionaires. Some of Because we're here to make money. They don't yeah. give a shit. In China, you know, it's all about who gets the better deal. If yeah. they feel like you or them got the better deal, that's the person that won. So they just want to win, same as we would want to win as yeah. an American entrepreneur. So when you can find that nice common ground between China and America, then it's great. But we have yeah. to find a common ground. Yeah. Totally. And there, right now, there's no common ground. It's one person stabs one here, one pokes a person's eye here, one steps on someone here. It's just like fucking each other over back and forth. It's never going to end. It's just like a gang war, but a government economic war. And it's unfortunate. That's why you see inflation so high. You know, a few people, all they have to do is change the prices of food, a few petroleum, oil, a few essentials, and it affects every single market across the board. I hate how they say petroleum prices are increasing. Okay, I understand, first of all, they can increase depending on the market fluctuation. It's fine. But I also know damn well, because I have friends working in the industry, we have more oil than we know, than, than they're telling us we do. We have a shit ton of oil. We have areas in this country still that have a shit ton of oil that haven't been drilled yet. Of course. So when they when they say, oh, there's a shortage or there's something, I'm like, no, don't fucking lie to me about that. Because they're using the same tactic every decade. It was this, it was that, it was this, it was that. It was global warming, it was this, it was, you know, dot-com boom, it was to that. It's always the same bullshit. Yeah, no, it's controlled by a few people. You know, the elite control the prices. The princes in Saudi Arabia, the kings of Dubai, people like that. And then the wealthy oil tycoons of texas and of the south they control there's some lot. people out there oh, yeah, i know a few yeah, of them right yeah so um yeah i've done a lot of work for some of these big companies and especially oil ones and i tell you what they have unlimited budget and they have unlimited finance unlimited buildings and they're backed by the government when you have all of that you can never lose well remember i was telling you a story about uh my parent was telling me who works for well his company is subcontracted by uh, petroleum companies, some really, really, really big ones. Well, the main one. And he's like, yeah, they have no budget. They needed something. Yeah. They needed some tool about it was, you know, for, for a big bulldozer or something that was like 60 feet long or something in certain parts. And to overnight it to them within 48 hours was going to cost $1.3 million. Approved. Sent. Like, How the fuck do you... $1.3 million approved to yeah. ship something? Yeah. Bro, you can't... You can build a whole community for $1.3 million. Yeah. And ship us a tool. That's crazy. I mean, that's that's people with <sighs> that's no corporate budget. corporate money, yeah. I know a dude who does uh, big relocations, and he just got a $60 million relocation to send one of some of Boeing's uh, airplane parts and pieces and ship them from here to uh, New Mexico. And he got paid $60 million. $60 million? Yeah, just to ship stuff, just to ship stuff. Did I just feel our trailer pull up? Uh, that is our 53 that is our, trailer. <laughs> oh that shit is a, that's, that's all the way from said, Texas you said it's yeah. at night I told you all the way from Texas because that's the driving. sound of, of a 53 foot trailer that's right he's been driving on so he's going to park out there yeah. in front sleep take until sleep, our, take our, our nap, guys like, pull yeah. up in the morning unload yeah. him and distribute it all over the that's state that's crazy hey shit is 24 7 shit's happening 24 7 shit's happening shit's real no bullshit over here yeah shit's all real yeah no dude this 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 where we at bro this is it's happening it's growing beautifully, you know. Yeah. We we started with the empty room, and we now it's the studio. Remember, you know? remember, we were walking here, and like, what should of, we do? Which room should yeah. we pick? We we'll use this for this, we'll use that for that. Now it's like full blown. It's sick. 
And it's going to get even better. This is just the beginning. And then we're going to get hit the downstairs, all those spots, yeah. and blow that out. Then we're going to hit over there in the work. We're just going to keep expanding, expanding the idea. Then we're going to Houston. We're opening Cube World Media in Houston. We're going to have our podcast room over there. Then we're opening it in Las Vegas. So you've seen how Cube World USA has been such a great success, the 10 locations we have, and growing to 11 about to be this weekend. Same thing with Cube World Media. You know, we just started with one. We're going to already have two in the works, already have the contracts agreed to. Everyone's willing to open the doors to us as soon as we're ready to set up shop. Three is all on us. Vegas is wide open. You know that I'm connected out there and we got people out there, yeah. tons of people out there. With that said, this is an opportunity for you guys. Like, we are looking for good people in our team. So, producers, DJs, if you're related in, the, if you're in the media industry, podcasting, streaming, DJ and producing, if you're in the office furniture industry, if you're in the commercial real estate industry, like hit us up. Like really, we're looking for good people in our team. Yeah, the opportunities it. are endless. I'd say let us know. You know, if you want to be successful, if you want to make money, if you want to change your life and try something different and difficult, and it's going to challenge you every single day and make you a better, more successful person, then that's what we're here to help people do, you know, and Alex is happy to mentor and guide people along the way and coach them. I'm happy to help joint venture or help you grow your business portfolio or real estate portfolio or finance and asset portfolio, which him and I are heavy on preaching about commercial assets and retaining a value to non-attached fixtures. So just let us know however we can help you guys, you know, as long as you're a legit, real serious person that wants to change your life and is about your business we're here for you. Yeah, I'm glad you meant. I'm glad you dropped the word uh, difficult because this shit is not easy. I'm not telling people yeah. hey, it's not. Hey, yeah, you're gonna sit at home, not. work a few hours, and post and do. You'll be fine. Yeah. No, fuck no, dude. You want to come to some hardcore shit, some boot camp, some real hardcore like super soldier military drill type of program? This is it. This is where I'll be at. He has a different way of teaching than me. He'll teach you one way. I'll teach you another. At the end of the day, you must be yourself, and you're gonna know your own way how to operate and program. It's gonna work for you. And simple, either it will work or it won't. Like I told Alex, it's sink or swim. All we could do is show you how, and you're either good at it or you're not. Not everyone's cut out to do what we do. Fuck no. They don't have the intestinal fortitude or the, or the mental gratitude to even sustain what we do. And those people, I would tell you right away, I always tell you they ain't cut out for this. But there's awesome. a few that are. There's a very few select few that will become millionaires that will learn from people like us and will be more successful than you can imagine your wildest dreams and you look back on it and you'll be forever grateful and a part of our community and our group and our network that's the select few you know the, the few and the proud all the rest will fall and there'll be crabs in a bucket just trying to reach at each other to get to the top and that's just how the world's made there's a few leaders and there's a lot of followers there's a lot of followers most a lot of followers yeah and we're here to lead people to success and to the mission overall in their life for what for getting them to do what we want them to do for their own benefit and reasons that's the ultimate key to success like i always tell you having someone else do what you want them to do for you but for their own reasons that is how you determine if you've made it because why it's a win-win situation yeah. now you're not just helping yourself you're legit helping someone else while helping yourself, while helping them achieve their dreams, while achieving your own dreams. At the end of the day, if you guys did the right thing, like how I always use our partnership as a great example of success, then you guys will be successful too. You know, the same thing as I told Rhett and Cameron, working together as a power group and a DJ and a technician and video audio and all that stuff is going to make them a duel. The duel mm -hmm. is formidable. I had no idea. Like all this, like legit red is a magician when it comes to this shit bro i have no idea how to do any he's of that. good shout out whole, shout out to red our yeah, cube world media manager yeah that guy is good it's it's all about finding your niche right like w what did i say when i came in you know i started working with trailer like okay listen i i like wholesale stuff yeah i like moving trailers or yeah. half trailers or ltls like that's i like that like 900 station you know 85 100 that i like that stuff Feels and good. that's what i kind of followed that's where you kind of grew me in that's what you kind of brought me into connecting with people and Okay, now I'm, I'm building my own asset like that. It's like, what what are you good at? Which is what you also preach. What are you good at? Yeah. Like, what do you fit in? Yeah, you like, have I don't to. fucking know how to do this live streaming thing. The guy was here two hours setting this up, and I wouldn't have the patience or yeah. YouTube information to do it. You know, uh, 
It's different, yeah. It's, it's different. So we, we need people. We need a team, bro. You have to have a team, you know. What you yeah. may be good at, I may not be. But what I may be better at, you may not be, and vice versa. And we feed off that. But what we may be both bad at, Red's better at. Yeah. And not saying we can't do it, because, of course, we can do anything you set your mind to. But sometimes other people already know a little more, a little faster. It's better spent their time doing it than yeah. you doing it. So we could do what you and I are best at. That's called recognizing and understanding your opportunity. You yeah. Know, every single time you have to understand where your time is the best spent, where you have the most value. That's that's everything. You know, you could you could take, for example, the same old classic car to three different people. And one will say it's worth nothing. One will give you a little bit for it. One will say it's the rarest, oldest car ever. And only one person knew what it was out of the three. But if you take it to the wrong people out of the three, you'll never get what yeah. you're worth. Yeah. Same idea with business and skills and industry and everything we're doing and leadership and podcasts and media. Once you're in it, once you're immersed, once you feel it, you'll know right away where you belong. And everyone has their place. And if you don't, then you know it's not your industry and you don't belong there. And you need to figure out something else to switch yeah. so you could be at the success level that you envision. Well, right? That's what I always tell people. People, want, I hate when people say, I'm looking for myself i'm trying to find purpose in life you don't fucking find purpose in life you create your purpose in life you don't find yourself you create yourself yeah. how do you create yourself by doing shit try this okay yeah i don't like it try this okay and not i don't like it because it's hard i don't like it because you really don't fucking like it like i was gonna be a doctor i went to fuck i went medical i was bio major right i went there i got a taste i'm like fuck that i don't like it it's not about what i grew up seeing in my family it's all about prescription and shit I'm not down for that. Yeah. So I'm like, fuck that. And I switched. And then I, from that, I, I put in time in law enforcement. Okay, I loved it. I did, I did my duty. Okay, time to try something else as well. So now in, in business and in public speaking and, and all that stuff. So it's constant growth. Yeah. yeah. Constant growth. If you become stagnant, you, you become a still person. Yeah, if you become stagnant, you decay and you die. Yeah. Because the only constant has changed and the only change that's happening is we're all getting older. And so as you get older, you know, your body dissipates. And if you don't reach your success constantly, you're not improving constantly, you're never, ever going to reach your goals or wildest aspirations or dreams. You have to start now. You have to start when you're a kid. And if you didn't start today, you started too late because you should have started already. That's what it's all about. And so I always tell people, it's never too late to start, but you better start now and you better go fast and you better try hard and you better put in the work and the hours and the time if you didn't start a very long time ago. And even if you did, Start a long time ago. Well, you better keep going because now mm -hmm. you're going to gotta keep up for all the other people behind you trying to come and take your place. Yeah. So, you know, it's just like holding the belt. It's just like holding the championship, a title. When you got the championship of your industry, like how I do in, in the furniture and asset industry, I feel like I got the belt right now. You know, everyone coming after me, everyone trying to take shots. I was sending viruses to my websites, everyone talking shit, everyone trying to shut shit down. Oh, uh, suing me here, reviews there. Fuck you all. Go to hell and stick it up your fucking ass, bitch ass motherfuckers. The and amount so, of times I had to listen from your competitors about you, bro. I was dude. like, it, <laughs> I, have, I have a recorded response. I'm okay, cool. I understand. But hey, I'm here to do business, so get over your fucking emotions. You're dealing yeah, with me. You're working with me. Funny. Like that's what kind of annoys me about people too. Like they 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 assume they take me and my identity for for something that happened between you and them ten years ago. <laughs> I was like, well, are you you a fucking businessman? Like you're talking to me. Yeah. Some of them are good. Some of them like. The, the, you know the the 900 station thing you know gave it a shot and guess guess what now we're all winning not everyone made and we money. do more business together yeah because it's, he took a, he took a shot at you know chance at me yeah uh and cool shit is working out doing more business together but when people hold down to the, the bullshit and the uh, grudges like guess what they do they're all old as fuck going out of business and having fucking brain aneurysms heart attacks and strokes yeah we're dealing with those now it's fucking yeah. for the, with the alcoholics and, Al and, and alcoholism crazy, drinking man. their self to death fucking so fucked up they can't walk like and these are dudes older like 50s minimum old 60 money. 70 years old 80 years old dealing with, yeah. and that's it the beautiful part about it, check this out Father Time waits for no man coming out. to get their motherfucking ass. They're going to die out. Yeah, they're going to die out faster than we are. And because you and I take care of ourselves and we're healthy yeah. and we work out and eat decent and go travel, yeah. you know, we're going to outlive all of them. So who's going to be laughing in the end? We're going to hold the whole fucking furniture empire and be like, fuck you, motherfuckers. Drown in that shit, bitch, and put a fucking lid on it and seal that shit. Fuck you. Now that I That's think about it, you. there's really nobody our age in that industry no one did. Is that true? Well, you know I, a shit ton more than I, I do. I know every single person. You know in the whole more country. of them than I do. But as far as like me, yeah, they're all like 
No, they're older, older than us or, or older than us. That could be our father or our grandfather. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's not enough not enough young cats, which which is good for us. I mean, this shit is, we're gonna take over. Oh, we're everything. gonna take over. Imagine ten years from now, yeah. will, will the dude you were talking to today still be around? No, no, no. Shit, we, no, we're taking dude. out some of them one at a time. They're, they're one coming, at a time. We're literally coming, sniping they're, one they're, at a time. Coming to us. Yeah, clear, they're coming to us. That's a good thing. The biggest names in our whole industry, the biggest websites in the world, buy from us to sell to their own clients because they don't have yeah. the assets and yeah. furniture that we do. From here to New York to Florida to Canada to Mexico. Yeah, They're so I tell them, from just, all over. Yeah, take, use my website to sell shit. Right before so. I got here, I was, I was in the fucking bathroom. And I was sitting there. And I was on the phone. And before I even finished, dude sent me $4,500 within like five minutes. And I sold the last pop and pot, the double. And um, I gave him a little discount. And I he said, oh. you're the only one in the country that has this right now. And I said, what's it worth? And he tried to lowball me for like half the price. And I said, you're going to pay my price or else I'll just let it sit and someone else is going to come buy it. He already got it for like one third of the price. Yeah, of actual one third. Yeah. And so he says, you know what, Kevin, you're right. It's a good price deal. I'm going to send you a purchase order right now. People try, you know, you can't, you can't, yeah, yeah, you it's, a try. it's a hustle. Yeah, it's a hustle. But um, it's good. I would try to in a way. Yeah. But um, Damn, the we point saw is, them, dude. he's coming all the way from San Francisco to yeah. pay me. And he's having paying us to ship it up there. And he'll set it up himself. I don't even got to set it well, up. That's what I did with New York. Yeah. Send four of them out and there. Exactly. They set it up. And then they're paying us for the shipping and the product. So we're sitting here just pushing buttons while the whole world is setting up our assets. That is success. And that is the definition of success, which is what I told you, of making someone to do exactly what you want them to do for your own reasons while for their own benefit. That's what I just did today while taking a shit in five <laughs> minutes for $4,500. I just like waking up to money. Oh, every day. How many times? 10,000, 20, yeah. 30, 40, 50,000. You just wake up to it and you're like, holy shit, all my bills are paid. Everything's good. All the buildings are paid. All the trucks, cars, guys. And I'm just sitting here on top of everything in the podcast studio having a great time on a Thursday afternoon. That's what success is. Now you're starting to taste it. You're starting to feel it. Well, I mean, it's, shit, for the amount of work that we put in. No, we better be successful. I think so, bro. We better I mean, be. And no one Otherwise, we were stupid. Oh, we're the stupid as fuck for us. Yeah. We put in more work, Alex, and I, than most people. I won't say anybody because my mentor, Al Kashani, you outwork me. I'll give that to you, yeah. motherfucker. You outwork me, Al. Well, that's why but, uh, your ass always ends up in uh, every few months ends up being fucking sick. And I, yeah. you learn from him. You drive yourself, yourself into the hospital bed. He drives I learn from you. Yeah, <laughs> I end up in the fucking emergency room. Oh, it's you, but if you are who you surround yourself with, like but, but you, that's good. your mentors are billionaires. You're a millionaire. I look up to you. Yeah. Not a millionaire yet, but then you're on your way. Though there's also an ugly side. Like tell these fucking people that they think we're sitting here for just jerking off and collecting money. No, that's fucking work, man. Yeah. And once and once. In a while, you end up like crashing hard if you don't take care of yourself. Right? Oh, totally. I mean, yeah. I've been. That's why I always harp on your ass because you, you <laughs> need to take care of your health more. Yeah. Now that you have, now that you have a baby. Yeah. yeah. If, if I go, it's it's all bad. You know, everyone would lose. Yeah. So that's not gonna happen though, because you know it's hard to kill me. I can't even kill myself if I try. Uh, yeah. Which, <laughs> which, which you do. Yeah, which I've tried, but it yeah. does. It's, it's just shit ain't working, dude. If you're, it's your time to go, it's your time to go. Yeah. But it sure as fuck isn't my time right now. It's go time right now, and I feel really, really good and energized, and I feel wonderful. And so what I really learned is work-life balance. That's why, like, on my birthday this year, 33 years old, I was a vegetable. And I was sitting in the hospital with a fucking catheter in my dick and tubes up me and IV and this and pills and things. And I was fucked up, like dude. Shit. I almost died from working, from stress. And I was at a fucking porn star convention. Supposed to go have a threesome downstairs and do all this crazy ass shit and uh, VIP badges and all this stuff. And I couldn't even go to my own fucking porn star convention. I fell to my knees and collapsed at the uh, Resort World Hotel. And it was just fucking terrible. And that's when I checked myself. After that, I said, fuck this, dude. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to trip myself out, stress myself out. Whatever the fuck happens, happens. And that's when I started changing my whole self what I did with my time, how I balanced my time, my physical self and started to work out again, which I started loving and, you know, and back and forth with that, but getting back on it and just back into a routine. I, I stopped a lot of drinking, even though I didn't drink much, I drank beer, but um, 
I cut out most of that out. I drink like one or Stop two beers a week. Some nasty juices and eating chips and chips and sugar. Energy shit. drinks. Unless you're hiding that shit from me. Not too much. No. Okay, because but, but you have improved that. So I I'm barely. Happy. No, I do yeah. look at my snacks. They're like beef yeah, jerky, yeah, like yeah, good, good, good things. Good, yeah, good. that's why I got lean. No, I legit, got fit, legit dude. It, it, it's 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 that shit is not easy. It's for real. Yeah. You can kill you, man. Like, yeah. Look at me, bro. I end up with fucking shingles. Well, that's what I'm saying. Right before I have, we were supposed to go to Vegas. Almost I spent that trip on the fucking bed. Oh, EDC. That shit. Suck. Fucking EDC in bed. Yeah, That's dude. my worst supposed nightmare. Supposed to go to EDC, EDC oh VIP, bro. Oh my god! Celebrating the 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 900 station deal, but and you did get it. Shit too. is shit is real. It's, it was It'll the worst. Kill you. So you guys have to take care of your health. Health is wealth. Without health, you have nothing. Take it from me, who's had a lot of things, and my health went down. Guess what? All my fucking money was gone immediately. As soon as I couldn't produce and I couldn't pay my bills and overhead all my savings and properties and people started stealing and backstabbing, it gets all bad. You'll know from me or a million other people will tell you the same story. So, you know, I'm big on, on fitness and, and MMA and, and martial arts and, and all types of things. So I love it and I preach it and I practice it sometimes as I can. But as you know, when you're a businessman, especially you have five startups and are prominent and you're out there, it's hard to make time. But it just is. like you told me, Larry, even if it's 30 minutes, even if it's an hour, you reminded me something I already know, but I need to be reminded too. get out there and just do it. You know, I, st I still got the scrapes and the bumps and the bruises on my elbows from getting in there in the ring. But sometimes you just got to go in there and do it. And you feel a lot better afterwards. And it gives yeah. you confidence, gives you strength, and it gives you a lot of motivation to keep going. Gym yeah. is, is not just – working out is not just like gym. It's any kind of working out, bro. That's It's like – for me, it's like meditation. It's like solitude. Yeah. I have to have it, dude. Otherwise, I'll be doing stupid shit. Going crazy. Uh, yeah, yeah, going crazy. So get that out of the way. I tried it earlier in the day, and then I'm a better person. Yeah. And then you have Bob. And Bob, <laughs> just take off on Bob. I get pissed in the war room right there. Oh, Speaking funny. of that, the war room's going to turn red. That's Bro, our I, last I, colored room. Oh, what, really? What do you think we should do? Like, or like a red wall and a black wall, like alternating, I was thinking, red and black? Or just paint the whole fucking thing red like a mad room? Oh. Red and black, red and black. Well, that's what I was saying. Red and black alternating. Yeah. One yeah. wall red, one wall yeah, black. One wall red, one wall black. And we keep Bob there. Keep the the weights yeah, and, and the bench sick. there. That'll just be the yeah. area. Yeah, yeah. yeah that'll be it. Cool, cool. We'll yeah. give him a shout out when 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 it's ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. When it's all decked out, we'll do a little video premiere and all that. Oh yeah. man, well damn. I think we gave him all the updates. Yeah, that's a lot. A little yeah. bit of us, a little bit of how we think, and yeah. you know, to keep the story going and continue yeah. the thing going, we'll pick it up. And, you know, as busy as our schedules are, we'll, we'll try to produce some more. And now that Keep World Media is growing, we'll at least do an episode every week, you know, at least maybe a few a month at least, and grow on that. And as we bring our people, we haven't even brought our people, our audience, or my CEOs, my athletes, the music people, Retinos, and all oh, our connections, coming, dude. dude we, that's coming. We got some big people coming. The DJ's camera knows. Yeah. I mean, some well-known, well-Googled, respect, some top-ranked people from all industries and styles are coming here and we haven't even done that because we've still been setting it up for the past few months yeah. but we're yeah. getting there it's coming close so wait and stay tuned because come in the future it's just gonna blow the fuck up yeah mark my words time. i got a few people coming especially after the the scottsdale event oh yeah i already got people lined up yeah that's what i'm saying yeah you're gonna be coming yeah. down here in huntington beach yeah here we are in beautiful surf Thanks, city uh, usa huntington beach california brought to you by cube world usa cube world media and Purpose Over Pleasure podcast. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. There you go, guys. Click the link above. Follow us. Kevin, always a pleasure. Stay tuned for the next ep episode of the Adventures of Kevin Maxwell. <laughs> yeah. And all the updates with Cube World USA, Cube World Media, Purpose Over Pleasure. But like I said, guys, if you're a talent and you're looking for a job, you're looking for a place to get artistic, to fit in, to put in a good work and make a name for yourself and make money and enjoy life, hit us up and click the link below. See you guys next time. Thank you. Cheers, all. Oh.